You began on a dusty gym floor, arms crossed, legs crossed, lips buttoned and sealed, all eyes, all ears, all eager ears for the best 15 minutes of the week. Once a week, during morning assembly, Dr Simpson would bring in his record player, a boxy standard issue affair, and shh the room to a reverent hush. Then wait till you were leaning in, literally inclined at a 50 degree angle in a series of wobbly rows. All the P1s front and central, P7s lent up against the climbing bars, the middling ranks sprawled in between, and teachers perched on their stackable chairs. He'd story you first, a Genesis story. Once upon a time there was Mozart or Chopin or Liszt, the city or town which birthed their music, the particular ears it had fallen on, He'd tell you what to be listening out for. Not just the various instruments, the horns and flutes and drums and cellos, which were always clamouring for your attention, but also those moments when the music would swell and make an orchestra of your belly, or lodge like a scream at the back of your throat, or peel the roof right off your head and pitch you into another world. Listen up, he'd say. Picture the music. Let it in. And you did. You were glad to. You honestly couldn't help yourself. You recall all the obvious music, though none of it felt obvious at the time. It crept up on you and reached for your hand and dawned upon you like a series of fledgling revelations. That music could paint the loudest of pictures. That music could read like poetry. Vivaldi's Four Seasons in Calendar Sync. Peter chirruping after the wolf. That one tinseled piece from the yogurt advert where the spoons went dancing into the fridge. Listening to it made you believe you could also be a silver quick thing. In the Hall of the Mountain Kings, which was flat foot stomping and ugly trolls and just before the drums fell silent, a swirling dervish of every wild thing. You are still searching and will continue looking for a means of wording out this fierce sound. (laughs) ¶¶